Hello submarine friends, I thought I would do an update on the progress from my new aluminum body on the submarine. So I've actually finished all the aluminum work and I'm really happy. It was a big process and uh, it was a real learning experience as well. Anyways, I'll give you a tour. This here is now the new towing point. So this of course is anchored very well to the chassis of the submarine. And this is how I will tow it through the water when, to get to a dive site. These are the thrusters, these are the forward thrusters, and this is the vertical thruster. Uh, honestly, I don't know if I'm happy with this thruster being right here. I would prefer the thruster was right here, because when you activate the thruster here, the, the submarine is going to be like a pendulum. The problem is, putting it up here is weight. There's uh, about 80 pounds of motors here, and I want that weight down below the center of gravity. So that's something that I'm going to have to sort out. I'll put it in the test pool and if the weight can be moved from here to here then that's what I'll do. So I'm super super happy with this lightweight aluminum body. I think it looks nice and clean and smooth and what I really like about it is it never has to be painted. I'm just tired of painting submarines so this is fantastic. So you can see the light is sunk in right here. Really happy with that. The original light that was down here was just put back on and it actually will tear away very easily. So if it gets hooked on something, it'll just rip off. And again, the electric arm, that is unchanged. Um, right now the swing is disconnected, but it just has to be cleaned up and reinstalled properly and it's all good to go. So I'm pretty darn happy with all this. So this bump out right here is actually where this big large spool goes. This spool is quite heavy. It's probably 30 or 40 pounds and so I can't tell you how important it is that all the weight is really down low in this thing. So the spool has to be at the bottom. So this cover just covers that because it won't fit underneath without hitting the sphere. So the way that that system works is this float on top has 18 and a half pounds of buoyancy. So it's connected to the rope which is on the spool down below here and it just feeds through a couple of guides and up it goes. So what happens if I need to release the emergency buoy and bring the rope to the surface, I actually release these motors. So these motors are jettisoning of course. So when these motors fall off at the same time it releases this spool. There's a notch right here. That's what holds it from turning and that's released and then the spool goes to the surface and then the people on the surface can do what they have to do whether it's hoist up the rope or whatever the situation is. So the submarine is really unchanged in terms of the features that it has. Uh, one thing that I've had to change though is the oxygen bottle goes behind this cover right here. So that oxygen bottle actually will stay in there, never has to be removed unless I had an emergency and had to use that oxygen. The way that my system works is I have several small tanks inside that can be removed and refilled quite easily. So this tank that's underneath the submarine is actually the reserve oxygen giving me 72 hours of life support. So it doesn't have to be removed on a regular basis. So another feature that has changed with the submarine is I no longer need a drop weight. You see I realize that I have very heavy motor packs, one on each side, that I can drop. So that replaces the need for a drop weight. I like to keep it simple. So the less moving parts, the better. I can drop the arm, that's 50 pounds, and I can drop both uh, motor packs, that's another at least 120 pounds. So that offsets the need for a emergency drop weight. So the big concern that people have with this submarine is I keep hearing that it's going to travel through the water very inefficiently because it's a big giant box, it looks like a big barbecue. Well. That's true. It's not going to go through the water like R300 does, that's for sure. But the kind of diving that I do, I tow the submarine to a dive site, I drop to the bottom, and then I look around in a small area for something or just look around, and I never really venture that far. So the efficiency is really moot. I just added more battery power to this thing, and I should be able to get around just fine. So this submarine is very similar to Triton 36000. This is a way smaller, and it's way lighter. So the numbers work like this. Triton 36000 can travel at three knots. My submarine, per square foot of surface area, has 50% of the power for propulsion that Triton 36000 has. So in theory, I 
I should be able to travel at 1.5 knots. I'm very happy with that. That's plenty fast for me because we don't have the visibility to support a fast submarine. That's more than adequate for me. Another comparison is I have more power per pound of submarine than Triton 36,000. So I should be able to accelerate as well or better than Triton 36,000. That's a $48 million submarine. I'm very happy with those comparisons. So I couldn't be happier with how it's all turned out and how I expect it to perform. Now we'll be, I'll be putting it in my test pool with my cool new crane and I'll be doing that as soon as the weather warms up and then I can confirm all these things before I actually dive it. And I'll have to rebalance everything and get it all working again because now the body is a different weight than the original body. But I couldn't be happier with this. I think it looks terrific. It's nice and clean. I'm just, I just love it actually. Ciao for now.